All right, kids, today we're going to talk about Black Lives Matter, what it means and what it is. And we're going to focus on the question, do Black Lives Matter to Black Lives Matter? It's necessary to make a distinction between the statement along with the movement and the organization. It's been my experience that America has failed to hear the statement either because of the movement, all of the riots, cities are burning, or because of the organization. It's ran by Marxists or something, something. Let's start by looking at the statement. No matter how many analogies to houses being on fire or to different forms of cancer we use, the statement Black Lives Matter is repeatedly and purposefully misinterpreted by people who are determined to misunderstand it. On the surface, this rejection of knowing that Black Lives Matter looks like an issue with semantics. It rubs people the wrong way. It's as if we say just Black Lives Matter or Black Lives Matter only. Even so, would it make a difference if it was Black Lives Matter too? No. The phrase Black Lives Matter was first used on July 13th, 2013, exactly eight years ago, in a Facebook post by Alicia Garza, after George Zimmerman was acquitted in the shooting death of 17-year-old Trayvon Martin in Sanford, Florida. Garza posted what she deemed to be a love letter to black people, which ended with, I continue to be surprised at how little Black Lives Matter, and I will continue that. Stop giving up on black life. She ended it with, black people, I love you, I love us, our lives matter. Garza's friend, Patrice Colors, haikued those three words and four syllables into a hashtag. Garza, Colors, and Opal Tometi then started the Black Lives Matter Global Network as a decentralized political and social movement which takes direct action against incidents of police brutality and all racial motivated violence against black people with chapters all around the country and the world. We'll talk about this later. These three women were community organizers, artists, and writers when the Black Lives Matter Global Network was created. The statement in the form of a hashtag and its use increased after the deaths of Michael Brown in Ferguson and Eric Garner in New York City. Neither of their killers, both law enforcement officers, were sent to prison. At some point, Garza said that her and Colors were trained Marxists. Now, I'm not going to take time to explain who Karl Marx is and what Marxism is all about, but it's been eight years since the hashtag began and workers are no closer to owning the means of production than they were a decade ago. We still don't live in a classless society. That was never these three women's aims. I question if they can add Marxism to their movement or organization as much as, say, Henry Ford could put anti-Semitism in the assembly line of the Model T. Once upon a time, the BLM website stated, we disrupt the Western prescribed nuclear family. Now, when I heard about this, I was like, ugh knowing how important fathers are to American families until I realized that black women who identify as queer and will never have a family that looks like this wants their families and beliefs to be represented instead of the man, husband, father, woman, wife, mother, and their children type of family, which isn't necessary for success. But there are others, mostly conservatives, who took this and the Marxism thing and claimed that BLM was trying to destroy the nuclear family. But that's not supported. Evidenced by the rest of what was said on the website. We disrupt the Western prescribed nuclear family structure. Requirement by supporting each other as extended families and villages that collectively care for one another, especially our children, to the degree that mothers, parents, and children are comfortable. In other words, it takes a village. We know what this means, but they took it off their website anyway. Last year, the president of Greater New York Black Lives Matter, Hawk Newsom, said that if the movement fails to achieve meaningful change during nationwide protests over George Floyd's killing by Minneapolis police officers, it will burn down this system. He went on to say how hypocritical America is for suddenly being concerned with destruction. But even the BLM Global Network website released a statement, which rarely happens, disavowing what Hawk said and distanced themselves from it, saying that Hawk or his group were not a part of the official BLM Global Network chapters. Whatever the case, all of this and them are seen as anti-American, which takes us to the movement. BLM is a decentralized network with no real way to become members. Garza has commented that the network was not interested in policing who is and who is not part of the movement. Should BLM keep tabs on each protester, rioter, or person using the hashtag? A better question is, why don't those behaving badly get the one bad apple, individualized benefit of the doubt? That brings us to the distinction between protests, riots, and looters. Now, 
we can have a discussion about which one of any of these things actually brings about positive change or makes things worse for black people, along with the morality of these practices. And I was trying to figure out how to class or compare BLM to other movements of the past that came as a result of black death, either at the hands of law enforcement or from white people, which is essentially what BLM was created for. And a few came to mind, including the Watts riots in 1992, when four LAPD police officers were acquitted after beating Rodney King. But I steered away from the civil rights movement of the 50s and 60s, though, not because they're dissimilar in regards to protests versus riots, but because of the amount of respect that era receives now. Let's understand, this respect is a product of 60 plus years of revisionist history. There was a Watts riot of 1965, too. So riots didn't lead to the Civil Rights Act and voting rights. The eight-hour workday, women's suffrage, LGBTQ liberation. Don't get me wrong, the sit-ins at Woolworth and the bus boycott and what have you were very effective in the kind of activism I prefer, but by any means necessary, the Black Power Movement and the Black Panthers also came from this same era. Before I continue, I refuse to compare the riots and looting that occurred in 2020, which is largely attributed to black people as a byproduct of the BLM movement to the insurrection at the U.S. Capitol. That's a misdirect. See, when the Black Panthers visited the California State Capitol, and you'll know why January 6th suddenly isn't a great comparison for revisionists. Plus, there's enough terrorist activity, death, and violence, and destruction in white American history that we can go off of. I mean, mass shootings, bombers, the move bombing, Tuskegee experiments, the death penalty, the entire year of 1919, the Wilmington insurrection, Greenwood, Rosewood, the Colfax massacre, the Daughters of the Confederacy, and lynching from the KKK, just to name a few. Too many are comfortable with comparing the looting of black bodies to looting of buildings and businesses that aren't black owned. I can imagine that there are some who are watching this right now and punching the air because I have yet to criticize BLM. But thus far, I'm wondering if people hold the movement and organization to standards that are unseen among other campaigns or political action committees. With that said, BLM the movement is more than just protests and riots. It served as motivating factors in advancing things in other ways, like education and curriculum, hard history. People have conveniently forgotten some of the things I just named or didn't even know about them. Statues and presentation. It's weird how these terrorists are glorified with their likeness to be exalted and people having a problem with them being brought down by principle or being torn down. I only brought this up because I thought America liked revolutions. Representation. Although it isn't the end all be all, I mean, we need so much more like compensation. Policy. Well, still working on that one. Reimagining law enforcement. Defunding the police. Although with the rise in violent crime in cities across the country, the narrative has become that this increase is due to decreased police budgets. But only about 20 cities have even touched their budgets in order to address funding. The Derek Chauvin trial. Look, if someone says BLM doesn't do anything for black people, but also says the justice system caved to the mob, well, which is it? Would that mob be Black Lives Matter protesters? If so, then it works. They did something. For me personally, besides my direct participation in demonstrations around Central Ohio, BLM has encouraged me to have a better understanding of everything I just mentioned. Knowing the deaths of George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, Ahmed Arbery, and Elijah McClain, amongst others, are dismissed because talks too often break down to criminality and black violence. Such as, if it's called Black Lives Matter, shouldn't they do something about black on black crime? It's just another version of saying that black violence should be addressed before talking about any other issue in black communities, even if that involves police brutality. If a person, better yet a civilian of any color, kills another person of any color, we can fully expect that justice will be served, that law enforcement will do what it takes, and the perpetrator will be caught, charged, and convicted. The same cannot consistently be said about law enforcement. Where Black Lives Matter comes in is for the sake of justice being brought to police officers who are inoculated by police unions and qualified immunity and close and cozy district attorneys. There have been only seven murder convictions of officers for police shootings since 2005. 
That suggests the chances of a killing by the police leading to a murder conviction are about 1 in 2,000. There's this idea that if black violence decreased, then police brutality would as well. I guess police be like, stop killing each other or we'll kill you. Now, never mind that there's little correlation between the city's violent crime and fatal police encounters, as you can see from this graph from 2015. And never mind that it doesn't make sense when you realize white people commit less violent crime but are killed by police more. So how will less violent crime help black people with fatal police encounters? This is said in order to deny that fatal police encounters are racist in nature. Actually, neglecting to realize that they're admitting American police are killing a lot of people. 1,098 total died, to be exact, at the hands of police that same year, which is alarming when compared to how many less deaths occur at the hands of law enforcement around the world in other wealthy nations. But you can't use markers for racist police practices such as over-policing in black communities and fraudulent and unjustified police stops in order to mask another police brutality. This is confirmed by this study, which peer-reviewed this study, and said that the math used was all wrong. Even if, if white people had, on average, less police interactions, said interactions could present more deadly and dangerous situations than those of black people. Hashtag Simpsons Paradox. And can we please stop acting like police stops are created equal and are based on the rate of violent crime in black communities. We know from data in Stop and Frisk out of New York that white people were found to have weapons and contraband at a similar rate to black people, but were stopped, frisked, and searched far less. A study put out more recently says the same thing, adding that the disproportionate amount of police stopping black people decreased at night when it's harder to see and discern race. Besides, there are hundreds of smaller grassroots efforts from organizations and entities to end black violence that opponents of BLM don't acknowledge or even know of. And it's not like people who have a problem with BLM are funding or promoting those either. They say, what about black on black crime to deny rights, respect, and resources? But this is the backdrop. I haven't even brought up the ramifications that poverty has on homicide and violent crime as well. So what is BLM doing about it? What does the organization do and what have they accomplished as far as funding and donations? Well, the Black Lives Matter Global Network Foundation had taken in about $90 million in 2020 alone. Where did their donations come from? We don't know. Where did they go? We don't know. But it looked bad when it was reported that BLM Global Network Executive Director Patrice Khan Cullors had bought really expensive property and real estate recently and in the past. People wondered if that money came from BLM donations. I did too. But Con Colors pointed out the myriad of jobs she has held. She has two book deals, including authorship of a New York Times bestselling memoir. The Los Angeles Times reported last year that Con Colors signed a production deal with Warner Brothers. She also noted that she is a public speaker, owns a gallery, has a deal with YouTube, and teaches at a private liberal arts college in Arizona. She stepped down from her role as executive director of BLM earlier this year. Do black lives matter to black lives matter? Well, the statement might be the blackest thing since say it loud, I'm black and I'm proud. The movement in the hands of people, yes, cares about black people. The organization, no. They're going to have to open up them books for me to change my mind. Alicia Garza, Patrice Con Colors, and Opal Tometi? Sure. Through different modes, methods, and messages, there has always been a movement for black lives, and Black Lives Matter may be the largest of them all. Over the years, Black Lives Matter, the organization, has become big and influential. So it would appear that opponents have an issue with BLM's size, scope, and slogan. Dismissing the statement and the movement along the way, while the vast majority of protests were positive and peaceful. If BLM did the exact same thing they have done the last eight years, but their name was Amazon or Nike, you know, companies who have done far more damage and paid less taxes, they wouldn't get as much backlash. It's anti-blackness and the principal implementation gap. Look it up. While you're at it, look up speeches from Martin Luther King Jr. too. I'm reluctant to bring him up because I don't want people to think I'm comparing him to BLM. But it's as if he only ever said one thing from 
his I have a dream speech. And then the people who say something about it neglect to quote it correctly and pretend his dream is colorblind. I'll close with this. Once society has embraced changes driven by social movements, the more unpleasant and uncomfortable aspects of their history is often forgotten. In 60 years?